In this lesson, we are going to create a regression model that predicts housing prices. In general, regressions are used to predict numerical values. The procedure will be very similar to the previous classification use case. I have prepared a dataset with two spreadsheets for the training and the test. Please check the course materials to download the Excel file. In the training dataset, each row represents a house that was sold in the past. In the columns, we can find several features that describe some characteristics. If you want to know more about the different features, go to the description sheet. The features contain, for example, the crime rate in the surrounding area, the average number of rooms or the pupil-teacher ratio of the town. Of course, these are only some examples. In reality, we would probably find more features which describe a house and are correlated to the price. In column O, there is the target value that we want to predict later. In this case, it's the median value in $1,000. In total, there are over 450 houses in the training dataset. Let's continue with the test dataset. Here we have to use the same structure as in the training dataset. So we exactly have the same columns, however, without values in our target column, since these shall be predicted by the regression model. Overall, we are going to predict the prices for 50 houses. Again, I have prepared another sheet with the results if you want to compare the predicted values to the actuals. As you can see, the framework is very similar to the classification. The actual difference is that our target value is not a binary yes or no, but a numerical value. Let's get back to our files and create the two datasets. First, we upload the training spreadsheet. I call this one Boston Housing Prices Training. And after the upload is completed, we check the data. I change the key to a dimension and set the data type to string and nominal. Let's quickly go through the other ones. Jazz is a binary data, that's okay. And also the remaining measures are fine. I save the dataset and add the test dataset. This time I would like to upload the test sheet with the results to compare the predictions in the end. Of course, in a real use case, we wouldn't have these results. Once again, I change the key to a dimension and adjust the data type. That's perfect, we are now ready to start the predictive scenario with a regression model. Let's call this scenario housing price regression. You see that the procedure is the same as with the classification. We add the training dataset and define which column of the dataset is the key. The data types can also be checked once again and then we have to specify the target value, which is the median value in our case. This time we don't want to exclude any columns or influences, so we start the training. This can take a few seconds, but not too long because our training dataset is very small compared to the previous marketing call dataset. All results are shown on two pages. On this overview page, there are the global performance indicators, such as the root mean squared error. 
This KPI measures the average difference between the predicted values and the actual values. The smaller the value, the more accurate the predictive model is. On the other side, the prediction confidence indicates the capacity to achieve the same degree of accuracy when applied to a new dataset. With around 94%, it's still robust. However, it is not as good as in our classification use case. Coming to the target statistics, again our training dataset was split into a training and a validation set. It is recommended to briefly check that both datasets show similar characteristics regarding minimum, maximum, mean and standard deviation. Next we have a look at the top 5 influencer contributions. Two features stand out, the percentage of lower status people and the average number of rooms. Both features have a high influence on the housing prices. The next graph shows the actual prices on the y-axis and the predicted ones on the x-axis. The green angle bisector represents a hypothetical perfect model. The blue solid line, which lies sometimes above and sometimes below the green line, represents the results of our regression model. The closer the blue line to the perfect model, the better our model is. Let's continue with the second page, where we can find more details about the influencers. Overall, there are eight features that affect the housing prices with different contributions. On the chart below, the feature H with its influence is illustrated. It is noticeable that smaller values rather lead to a higher price, whereas higher values lead to a lower price. Selecting the top contributor percentage of lower status, it is also clear that the smaller the percentage, the higher the housing prices and vice versa. On the scatter plot chart below, additionally, we can analyze the frequency of the groups. If we want to try out different versions of the model, we can open the model panel on the bottom and duplicate the existing model. After that, we could, for example, exclude one of the influencers and analyze and compare the results against each other. In order to apply the regression model, we select the little factory symbol and choose the test dataset as data source. Since we are going to generate a third dataset, we can decide whether we want to replicate the columns in the test dataset. In this case, I want to replicate all values, especially the median price as the target value to compare the predictions with the actuals. Furthermore, we select the necessary statistics and prediction figures. This time I am especially interested if there are any outliers. Finally, we have to give a name for the new dataset and apply the model. After the regression model is applied, we go back to the files and create a new story with the generated dataset. First of all, I am interested in the predicted values for each house. Therefore, I create a simple bar chart and select the key as a dimension and the predicted value as measure. Let's sort the values from lowest to highest. That's fine, however, let's compare these figures to the real prices. To do this, we can simply add a variance and as the second measure, we select the median value. Then we activate the percentage difference and we are ready to analyze the results. Some of the predicted prices really have higher deviations with more than 20%. But with regard to the small number of features we used in this regression model, the predictions are satisfying in my view. So as a first rough indication, these results are definitely useful. 
Finally, let's see whether the algorithm detected some outliers in the dataset. We can see that there are two housing prices assigned to A1. That means that those two are outliers. So the regression model probably noticed that something is different with these houses. And indeed, by means of the significant absolute and percentage delta, these houses must be outliers. That's it. Now you are familiar with the regression model. This predictive scenario can be applied to many business questions where figures have to be estimated. The most challenging part is definitely to find enough labeled examples from the past to train the algorithm. If you want to become the SAC expert in your team, then please check out my SAC masterclass on Udemy. Follow the link in the description and thanks for watching this video.